Section 1.1 Functions Describe subsets of real numbers. Real numbers are used to describe quantities such as money and distance. The set of real numbers R includes the following subsets of numbers. We have the naturals. Natural numbers. Uh, which include, they're the counting numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we put the naturals here. Then we have the whole numbers. Whole numbers are the naturals and they include 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, keep on going. So we have the whole numbers, which uh, includes one more number. It includes all the naturals and one more number, which is 0. Then we have uh, the integers. Integers are the whole numbers and their opposites. So we have dot, 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 negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Keep on going. Uh, so here we have the integers, which include all the naturals, all the wholes, and then we have the integers. Next we have, uh, let's go with the rational numbers. We have rational numbers. And uh, rationals are any number that can be written as a fraction. And even the number 2 can be written as a fraction. That's 2 over 1. So here we have the rationals. And then if you're not rational, you are irrational. And that's numbers like the square root of 3 or pi or the number e. So over here we have the irrational numbers. Set builder notation. These and other sets of real numbers can be described using set builder notation. Set builder notation uses the properties of the numbers in the set to, def to define the set. So we have x such that x is between negative 3 and 16, and x is a member or an element of the integers. So that means the, the set is negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. Keep on going all the way up to 16, all of those integers. Set builder notation. Describe the set of numbers using set builder notation. So here we have x such that x is greater than or equal to 8, where x is an element of the integers. On this one, we have x such that x is less than 7, and x is an element of the real numbers in this case. And then all multiples of 3, x such that... Uh, we have uh, x is equal to 3n, where uh, n is an element of the integers. Interval notation. Interval notation uses inequalities to describe subset, subsets of real numbers. The symbols brackets are used to indicate that the endpoint is included. So bracket means include in the interval, while the symbol parentheses are used to indicate that an endpoint is not included in the interval. The symbol infinity, positive infinity, and minus the symbol negative infinity are used to describe the unboundedness of an interval. An interval is unbounded if it goes on indefinitely. So here we have x's between a and b, and we include a and b. So in interval notation, that's a comma b with brackets. In the next one, we have a comma b with parentheses. Here we want to include a, so we put a bracket. We don't want to include B, so we put a parentheses. And then uh, we reverse that with this one. So parentheses first, and then the bracket. Let's look at unbounded intervals. Here we have X is greater than or equal to A. That means X is going from A to infinity. Here we have X is less than or equal to A. So we're going from negative infinity to A, and we're going to include A. We never include infinities. Infinity or negative infinity will always have a parenthesis. Here we have x is greater than a. That means we are uh, kind of starting with a, but don't include it, and then going to infinity. Uh, here we have x is less than a, so that means we're going from negative infinity to a. And then this is completely unbounded, and we're going from negative infinity to infinity. Use interval notation. Write each set of numbers using interval notation. So here we go from negative 8, don't include negative 8, to 16. x is less than 11, that means we're going from negative infinity to 11. x is less than or equal to negative 16, or x is greater than 5. So we're going from uh, negative infinity to negative 16. 
uh, or we're going from, uh, let's go from five to infinity. Identify functions. Recall that a relation is a rule that relates two quantities such uh, such a rule pairs the elements in a set A with elements in a set B. The set A of all inputs is the domain of the relation, and set B contains all outputs or the range. Relations are commonly represented in four ways, verbally. A sentence describes how the inputs and outputs are related. The output value is two more than the input value. Second is numerically. A table of values or a set of ordered pairs relates each input x value with an output value y value. Graphically, points on a graph in the coordinate plane represent the ordered pairs. And then algebraically, an equation relates the x and y coordinates of each ordered pair, such as y equals x plus 2. A function is a special type of relation. A function f from set a to set b is a relation that assigns to each element x in set a exactly one element y in set b. The relation from set A to set B is a function. Set A is the domain. Set B contains the range. So we have a function if 1 of set A or 1x goes to 1y. And here 1x goes to 1y. Here 1x goes to 1y, except these two go to the same y. That's okay. We still have a function. An alternate definition of a function is a set of ordered pairs in which no two different pairs have the same x value. Interpreted graphically, this means that no two points on the graph of a function in the coordinate plane can lie on the same vertical line. So here we have a function where no matter where you draw a vertical line, it will only cross one point. That means that, let's say this x value right here, let's say this was 3, goes to a value of 4. And so 3 only goes to 4 and that's it. But if 3 went to 4 and 3 went to 5, then uh, this would fail the vertical line test because then a vertical line would cross two points instead of only one. Identify relations that are functions. The input value x is a student ID number and the output value y is that student score on a physics exam. Each value of x cannot be assigned to more than one y value. A student cannot receive two different scores on an exam, therefore the sentence describes y as a function of x. So this would actually be a function. Let's look at b. Negative 8 goes to negative 5, negative 5 goes to negative 4, and so on all this, 1x goes to 1y. So this is a function. This is not a function because we have a vertical line crossing two points. So for letter C, this is not a function. And on letter D, we have y squared is equal to 2x uh, plus 5, and then y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2x plus 5. So this is not a function, because if we plug in one value for x, we'll get out two y values. So this is not a function. Anytime y is raised to an even power, you're not going to get a function. If y is raised to an odd power, that will be a function. In function notation, the symbol f of x is read f of x and interpreted as the value of the function f at x. Because f of x corresponds to the y value of f for a given x value, you can write y equals f of x. In other words, writing y equals or f of x equals means the same thing. Because it can represent any value in the function's domain, x is called the independent variable. A value in the range of f is represented by the dependent variable y. Example 4. Find function values. If g of x equals all that, find each function value. Well, here we're going to plug in 6 where x is. So we have 6 squared plus 8 times 6 minus 24. That's equal to 36 plus 48 minus 24. That's equal to uh, 84 minus 24, so I get a value of 60. Here we're going to plug in negative 4x for all of the x's. So we get 16x squared. That's for the x squared. We have to square negative 4. And then minus 32x. That's plugging negative 4 in for x and x. And then uh, minus 24. That's really all you can do with this. 
For letter C, we're going to plug in 5C plus 4 in for the x's. So we have 5C plus 4 squared plus 8 times 5C plus 4 and then minus 24. Uh, so we get 25C squared plus 40C plus 16 and then plus, uh, not 80, but uh, 40C plus 32 and then minus 24 on the end. So we get 25C squared plus, uh, let's see, how about 80C? 80C. So I get the C's done. 16 plus 32 is 48. 48 minus 24 is 24. So we get plus 24. When you are given a function with an unspecified domain, the implied domain is a set of all real numbers for which the expression used to define the function is real. In general, you must exclude values from the domain of a function that would result in division by zero or taking the even root of a negative number. State the domain of each function. We have uh, negative infinity to zero, union with zero to seven, and then we have seven to infinity. We have to skip over zero. So here we've skipped over zero, and here we've skipped over seven. Uh, X cannot be zero or seven because that's the two numbers that makes the denominator zero. For letter B, T minus five has to be greater than or equal to zero because you cannot take the square root of a negative value. So T has to be greater than or equal uh, to five. So the domain is um, what we can include it. So this is a bracket. So we have five to infinity. The average maximum height of children in inches as a function of their parents, maximum height in inches can be modeled by the following piecewise function. Find the average maximum heights of children whose parents have the given maximum heights. Use h of x where x is the independent variable representing the parent's height and h of x is the dependent variable representing uh, the child's height. Uh, so h of x is this function. So we have one function for 63 to 66 and, and so on. So we want to find h of 67. 67 fits in between 66 and 68. Uh, so we have 3 times 67 minus 132. That's uh, 186 minus 132, and that's equal to 54. Now we want h of 72, and that's greater than 68, so we'll use this one here. We have uh, 2 times 72 and then minus 66, which is 148 minus 66. Let's see, 148, 66. We have 2, uh, that's going to be 82. So we have 82 for this one. Graph each piecewise function. All right, we can do that. And then we're going to add and subtract to the piecewise function to make it continuous after we graph this. All right, so let's draw an y-axis, an x-axis, and for x is less than 0, we want negative 3x plus 1. Well, if we plug 0 in, we have the point 0, 1, but we don't have an equal to with this, so at 0, 1, right there, we'll put an open dot. And then to the left of 0, this is a line, so we have a slope of negative 3. So I want 1, 2, 3, and negative 1. So here's a slope of negative 3. That's to the left of 0. Then in between 0 and 2, we have negative x squared. So if I plug 0 into this right here, we get the point 0, 0. And that's going to be a solid dot because we want to include that point. And then why don't I plug in 1? 1 will be uh, negative 1. And when I plug in 2, I get negative 4. So 1 gives me negative 1. And 2 gives me negative 2, 3, 4, right there. And I want that to be open. So there's that upside down parabola. And then for x greater than or equal to 2, I have another line. When I plug 2 in, we get 0. So we get the point 2, 0. And I do want to include that. I'll make it solid. And then to the right of 2, we have a line with the slope of 2. So I'll go up 2 and over 1 right there. 